Hey Legend Finance fam, a recession is when the economy takes a dip, with things like income, jobs, and production shrinking for at least six months. Much like a roller coaster's downward slide, don't worry, we're here to break it down for you. If you find this helpful, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for more finance insights. Determining whether we're on the brink of a recession requires understanding its definition. A recession can be informally described as a challenging economic phase that occurs roughly every decade, especially when looking at U.S. history. The U.S., a major global commerce hub, has experienced approximately 48 recessions since its inception. Many believe these downturns are an inherent aspect of capitalism. For a more precise definition, a recession is generally characterized by at least two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth. If you're not familiar with finance terms, think of it as the economy shrinking for six months or more. Some folks might not be familiar with the term GDP, and that's okay. Instead of jargon, let's use a straightforward analogy. In finance, we check the economic health of a place in three-month periods called quarters. One of the primary things we look at is the gross domestic product, GDP. Imagine GDP as a big tally of the value of everything a community creates over time. For instance, imagine someone who enjoys baking bread and sells a loaf for $5. That's a contribution of $5 to the GDP. Now think of your favorite local eatery, the store where you found your latest outfit, or even the services at the place where you work. All of these contribute to the total value of a community's economy, and that's our GDP. Think of GDP as the heartbeat of a community's economy. If it's steady and growing, it suggests good economic health. But if it starts to wane, the community might need to brace for some challenges. When you hear discussions about the feared recession, it's often linked to the state of the GDP. A recession, technically, is when there's negative GDP growth for two quarters in a row. To give some perspective, this year's first quarter showed a 1.4% decline. If the next quarter's numbers are also in the red, we'd technically be in a recession. That's a bit concerning. So what's the ripple effect for everyone? Let's dive deeper into its implications. For two consecutive quarters, if GDP declines, it indicates that our economy has been shrinking for at least six months. Such a scenario was often met with concern due to our societal emphasis on continuous growth. However, it's worth noting that in our current system, this consistent growth is vital, otherwise, parts of the structure begin to falter. To explain this, let's use the metaphor of a loaf of bread to represent our economy's cycle. This economic cycle consists of five primary components, Price creation, investment, production, consumption, and compensation. Think of this cycle as a continuous loop, like a wheel that keeps turning. Credit creation. This is about the accessibility of financing, be it for business endeavors or home mortgages. Investment. This involves channeling funds into a venture with the expectation that will yield more value than the initial outlay. Production. This is essentially the GDP, showcasing the sum total of goods and services produced. The interplay between these components keeps the wheel spinning. Any dip in one segment can potentially influence the others, hence the importance placed on steady growth in our prevailing economic model. In prosperous economic periods, the wheels of the economy spin more freely. Here's how the process typically goes. During robust economic times, credit creation is usually high. Financing is readily available, encouraging more investments in new ventures or expansions of existing ones. This scenario has someone, like an aspiring baker, envisioning their own bakery. Seeing favorable loan terms, they decide to set up Tony's Bakery. As such ventures flourish, the production of goods and services for the economy rises. With the bakery up and running thanks to a generous loan, there's plenty of bread to go around. In such abundant times, consumer optimism is high. Store shelves are stocked, boosting confidence in spending. People purchase goods eagerly, including fresh bread from the new bakery. The high consumption levels lead to increased business profits. With Tony's Bakery thriving, there's ample revenue for decent wages and perhaps the addition of new staff. In this model, the positive flow of prosperous economic times circulates through the wheel, leading to satisfactory compensation and abundant job opportunities. The cycle can continue, maintaining momentum and improving conditions, emphasizing the importance of growth in society. Our quality of life improves over time due to our ability to harness growth. This involves taking an initial idea that requires capital and transforming it into a value proposition that greatly benefits society, far beyond the initial investment. 
This concept of magnifying value represents economic growth, and it's at the heart of what our economy aims to achieve. However, challenges arise when obstacles impede this growth. Consider credit creation. If suddenly obtaining loans becomes a challenge due to higher costs and rigorous processes, a chain reaction initiates. Investment naturally reduces as the allure of risk-taking diminishes. Consequently, many potential businesses won't see the light of day, while existing ones might stagnate or even fold. For instance, after a successful year, a bakery owner might have planned to expand their operations to boost production. But with the new financial constraints, they might reconsider, stalling their expansion plans. The immediate aftermath is a reduction in the production of goods and services entering the economy. This decline is quantified using GDP. When this metric dips, it flags concerns about the economy's health, and specifically, it's the indicator experts watch when discussing recessions. The next phase of this economic challenge impacts consumer behavior. Observing fewer available products on store shelves or higher prices due to scarcity, consumers grow wary. This apprehension results in a preference for saving money rather than injecting it back into the economy through spending. At our hypothetical bakery, this translates to not only reduced production of bread, but also diminished sales as wary consumers spend less. The broader implication for businesses is a decline in revenues. Some might even fold under the financial pressure. Consequently, the amount of money in circulation diminishes, causing compensation rates to fall. This financial strain forces companies to downsize, leading to layoffs. In the context of our bakery, the anticipated expansion plans are shelved, and the idea of hiring additional staff is dismissed. This results in fewer job opportunities. The fear stems from the thought of an economy in stagnation. Reduced production and consumption during each rotation of the economic wheel amplifies the downturn in a reinforcing cycle. The real-life consequences touch everyone, whether it's reduced pay or job loss. To compound these issues, external factors like monetary policy decisions can exacerbate the situation. For instance, when the Federal Reserve opts to raise interest rates sharply, it makes credit acquisition even more challenging. This move can further squeeze an already strained economic cycle. The economic landscape is defined by a myriad of interconnected factors and events. At the heart of the current situation are tightened credit conditions. However, their effects are far from isolated. They extend across sectors and domains, casting a shadow on multiple facets of the economy. The stock market, a vital barometer of economic health, offers a revealing glimpse of this scenario. Its downward trajectory is not merely a dip in numbers. Instead, it represents declining investor confidence and a diminished appetite for risk. In flourishing economic conditions, there is buoyancy that encourages calculated risks. The present trend, however, indicates a notable departure from this norm. Other critical indicators, such as production and manufacturing indexes, offer additional insights. Their downward trend points to businesses navigating multiple challenges, be they on production lines or within supply chains. Moreover, the viewpoint of corporate leadership adds another dimension. An alarming 60% of CEOs anticipate a recession in the near future. Such perspectives, shaped by deep market insights and corporate strategies, add gravitas to the prevailing economic sentiment. Consumer sentiment, a direct barometer of the economy's pulse, is also leaning towards caution. It's a reflection of cautious spending habits, tighter budgets, and a broader hesitance in the marketplace. Amidst these challenges, businesses are resorting to downsizing. Such measures are more than business decisions. They're indicators of an environment where maintaining operational levels becomes challenging. This trend invariably impacts job markets and household incomes. A significant pivot in this scenario is the Federal Reserve's decision to raise interest rates. While on the surface, it might seem counterproductive, such choices often stem from the need to preemptively address broader economic concerns, notably inflation. The interplay of growth and inflation requires careful calibration, and the interest rate adjustments serve as a testament to this intricate balance. In sum, the current economic fabric is a blend of diverse elements. It's essential to recognize how each component, from consumer sentiment to federal policies, contributes to the overarching economic narrative. Okay, legend finance aficionados, that's a wrap on our exploration of recessions, those challenging periods where the economic currents seem to flow against us. We've entangled the complex web of factors that lead to these downturns and illuminated the pathways through which they touch our lives, from the job market to our wallets, and from big businesses to our local communities.
Knowledge is power, and by grasping these concepts, we become not just better investors or savers, but more informed participants in the global economic conversation. Your continuous support and thirst for knowledge make all the difference. The more we engage with topics like this, the more resilient and savvy we become. If this video sheds some light on recessions for you, don't keep it to yourself, share it. Let's grow this community of enlightened individuals ready to face the financial world head on. A heartfelt thank you to each and every one of you for being a part of this community before we go our separate ways. In the event that you have not done so already, make sure to click the like button and sound the alarm in order to ensure that you do not miss out on our subsequent in-depth look. In the expansive and ever-changing world of finance, it is imperative that you never stop learning, that you never stop questioning, and that you, above all, never stop staying legendary.